you're about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a forgery detail. For the past several months, a man posing as an actor has been passing worthless checks in your city. You've got a description of the suspect, but no lead to his whereabouts. Your job, get him. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, January 10th. It was foggy in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of forgery division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Welch. My name's Friday. I was on my way back to the office from a cup of coffee. It was 4.12 p.m. when I got to forgery. The squad I told wrote. her the report of herself. Told her it was a duty of the citizen. It is a duty, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Joe. Hi. Mrs. Neskett, this is my partner, Sergeant Friday. Mrs. Neskett? No, Sergeant. Seems Mrs. Neskett's mother got stuck with a bum check, Joe. Mm-hmm. She's a landlady out on West. Well, not a landlady, exactly. Only rents a couple of rooms, more for company than anything. Dad left a plan to get by on. Yes, ma'am. And we'd help her out if it was necessary. Dick and me. Dick's my husband. We help her out. Mm-hmm. So far, she's managed pretty well by herself. But if she pulls any more fool stunts like this, Tony has a $3 bill. See right there? No such account. Big as life. Stamps all over it. Mm-hmm. I just don't understand her. I just don't understand her at all. Well, anybody can take a bad check in his Nesket, no matter how careful they are. Even with good identification, you can be fooled. When they do, they report it, don't they? Well, yes, ma'am, usually. Look at the date. Way last December, over a month ago. Yeah. Over a month ago, and she hasn't done a thing about it. Didn't intend to, either. Didn't even want me to know. Good thing I started early this year. Early, ma'am? When our income tax. That's how I found out about the check. Oh. I used to work in a tax office, so I always make out Mother's Return. If I didn't do it, I don't know who could. Doesn't keep any records. Just stubs and a few bills. Well, someday they'll audit her and she'll find out. Well, why didn't your mother report this check herself, you know? You tell me. The man had an honest face. That's about all I can get out of her. How'd she happen to take it? It was supposed to be for his first month's rent. Well, and she's not out any cash. Sure she's out cash. Twenty dollars. That's what she's out. He made the check for seventy. A month's rent's only fifty. Not a lot of money, but twenty dollars is twenty dollars. Yes, ma'am. There's the principal too. Yeah. It's an actor, or something like that. Ma'am. The fellow gave it to her. Mother says she remembered his name from the movies. That's how she happened to take the check. I don't see why she'd trust an actor any more than she would somebody else. Can I see that, please? Mm-hmm. Parker Allington. You ever hear of him, Joe? Allington. Uh huh. Well, I think it sounds familiar. Was in pictures when I was a kid, I believe. Huh? Oh. I remember, I never cared much for him, though. If it's the same guy, the parts he played. What do you mean? Heavy. We ran the name Parker Allington through R&I, and we turned up one package listing a drunk arrest in 1935. We called the Screen Actors Guild to see if they could help locate him. They said they'd check, and they asked us to call back in an hour. 4.30 p.m. We left the office and drove out to the Western Avenue address Mrs. Nesbitt had given us. It was a two-story Spanish stucco with a rooms for rent sign in the front window. Somebody's coming. Mm-hmm. Yes? Miss Crimp? Yes. We're police officers. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Police officers? That's right, ma'am. Anita. Beg pardon? My daughter, Anita. She sent you. Yes, ma'am. I told her not to. She never does anything I tell her. Never has. You all right if we come in? Oh, living room's a mess. Don't worry about it, ma'am. And I was just putting away the ornament from the tree. It was raining last week when I took it down and I couldn't get out to the garage. Yes, ma'am. I won't press any charges. Well, that's up to you. Not against that poor man, I won't. And you can't force me to press charges. No, ma'am. Suppose you tell us about the check. Mm-hmm. Isn't much to tell. Your daughter says this man, Allington, gave it to you for rent. Here, let me get that box out of the way so you'll have some place to sit. I'll take care of it, then. All right, I'll put it here. Oh, yes, yes, fine, thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, check was for rent, is that right? That's right. When did you take it? Last month sometime. A week or so before Christmas. Well, the date's on it, isn't it? December 9th. Well, that's what it says. 
Have you ever seen Ellington before? You ever met up with him? Not in person. I may have seen him in pictures. He said he'd been in a lot of pictures. He seemed familiar. Well, now, ma'am, how'd he happen to come here to rent a room? We saw the sign out in front in the window. He was living in a hotel downtown, and was out this way visiting friends. Did he mention the name of the hotel? Uh, no, I don't think so. What about the people he was visiting? Well, what about them? Well, did he tell you who they were? If he may have. I couldn't say for sure. Not now. Now, you said he saw the sign. In the window. Yes, ma'am. He came in and asked about the room, but was still for rent. I showed it to him. Upstairs in front, a real nice view. He agreed to take it, did he? Straight off, straight off. Said he used to live in a house something like this when he first came to California years ago, when his wife was alive. Sort of reminded him of better times. That's how I put it. And he gave you this check for the first month's rent? Yes. I suppose Nita already told you. He made it out for $20 extra. Why was that? Well, he needed some cash money to hire a cab and move his things out here. And you gave him the cash, hmm? Twenty dollars. Well, I couldn't turn him down. Why not? Well, he just seemed honest, that's all. You can tell when a person's honest. Yeah, sometimes. And he was so anxious to get the room. He wanted to be all moved in in time for the holidays. He wanted to be with people, I suppose. Oh, I felt sorry for him. Did you ask for any identification? Oh, no, there wasn't any reason. I recognized his name. Besides, he was going to be living here. If there wasn't anything wrong with his check, he'd be around and make it right. And you never heard from him again? Now, that doesn't mean he was trying to cheat me. Well, it looks that way, ma'am. Now, you folks are policemen. It's your job to suspect people of being crooked, and I don't blame you. Your job. Yes, ma'am. Twenty dollars? Ma'am? Twenty dollars. Is that reason to throw a man like Mr. Ellington in jail? Well, it might be more than twenty dollars. Well, that's all I gave him, don't you believe me? Yes, ma'am. This man has passed quite a few checks. I told you before, I won't press charges. Yes, ma'am, you told us. You don't understand. He didn't mean any harm. You sure about that, Miss Crump? I'm a pretty good judge of human nature. I ought to be by now. Yes, ma'am. He's had lots of troubles. He's talented. Mm -hmm. Lots of troubles. An actor like him probably pulled down a fancy salary and never had any worries. Now it's all gone. All his money, his wife, everything. Well, if he'd never been rich, it wouldn't be so hard. You don't miss something you've never had. Yeah. If you're finished with me, I'd like to get on with my housework. Might if we use your phone? Oh, it's in the hall. I'll show you. That's all right. I'll find it. Thank you. You know, I didn't mean any offense, Mr. Grant. Oh, I suppose it's just your job. There's some cookies there. Where are you doing? Oh, I'd like to, but no. You're homemade. Very good. Oh, go on. Go on. Mr. Breckhardt, please. I'll wait if you don't mind. Thank you. Hello, Miss Breckhardt. This is Sergeant Friday. I spoke to you a little while ago about Parker Allington. Yeah, that's right. You asked me to call back. Uh-huh. When was that? Oh, I see. Yes, it certainly does. You bet. Thank you very much. Bye. Goodbye. I remember this time when I was a kid. My mom used to make it. Oh, well, maybe you'd like to take a few home with you. I've got plenty extra. Well, thanks anyway. They wouldn't let me inside the front door if I showed up with an armload of cookies. <laughs> you ready, Joe? Yeah. We'd like you to come with us, Miss Crimp. Me? Well, what on earth for? I want to see if you can identify the man who gave you that check. You mean you've already arrested him? No, ma'am. Well, I don't understand. Well, we want to show you some mug shots, some photographs. You want me to pick out Mr. Allenton's picture? If you can. Well, now, that's silly. You don't need me for that. The studios must have pictures of him. The newspapers? Why, that's downright silly. It wasn't Allington, man. What? The fellow who passed that check. What'd you find out? Allington died three years ago. <laughs> Miss Breckhardt at the Screen Actors Guild had checked with the motion picture relief homes. They reported that Allington had lived there from 1949 until a heart attack caused his death several years later. We managed to convince Mrs. Crimp that she'd been taken by a professional swindler. South City Hall, we showed her mug shots of known bad check artists. No, that's not him. Oh, how about this one? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure not. No, that's not him either. He was older. Well, the picture might be out of date. Even so. Well, that's it. Well, Miss Crimp. Yes? Could you describe him for us? Well, he was medium sized. A little taller than you are, maybe. Yeah. How old would you say he was? Oh, about my... In his 60s. Gray hair? That's right. Any marks or scars? No, not that I noticed. How about his eyes? Beg pardon? What color were his eyes? 
Well, I couldn't say. He was only there for a few minutes. Yes, ma'am, I understand. He just seemed like an average man. For his age, gentleman, nice looking, sort of distinguished. Anything else about him? No, except for his expression. Well, what do you mean? He was kind of sad, unhappy, like he'd been through a lot. <laughs> yes, that won't help you, though. Good night. Is that all? Yes, ma'am. We'll take you home now. Uh, officer. Yes, ma'am. Would you mind doing me a favor? I'd appreciate it. What is it, Miss Clinton? Don't tell my daughter about all this. I mean that it wasn't Mr. Allenton that I let somebody trick me. She'd say it proves that I'm not able to take care of myself. I'd never hear the end of it. She treats me like a child as it is. Now, you don't have to tell her, do you? No, ma'am. I'd sure appreciate it. Not that she doesn't have my best interests at heart, but nobody likes to be criticized all the time, especially by their own flesh and blood. You got any children, Sergeant? No, ma'am. Well, then you don't understand how I feel. Yes, ma'am, maybe I do. You couldn't. We drove Miss Crimp to her home, and then we checked out for the night. By the end of the week, two more landladies in the Western Avenue area had reported receiving bad checks from a man who claimed to be Parker Allington. Their story tallied almost word for word with what Ms. Crimp had told us. January 13th, 4.45 p.m. Frank and I checked back into the office after an interview with one of the victims. You'd think that guy would wise up. Can't go on using a dead actor's name forever. Somebody's going to catch on. Well, they haven't so far. No, well, sooner or later. Thought you were on a diet. Huh? Thought you were on a diet. Well, Joe, I've got to keep up with strength. Yeah. Person needs a certain amount of sugar. Mm-hmm. Know. It's not so high on calories. Read an article the other day. Teaspoonful of sugar, only 35 calories. Have you lost any weight yet? No, I'm all my own. You haven't lost any, though? No. I don't want to get thin, Joe. Just sort of uh, watching it, that's all. Mm -hmm. Forgery, Friday. Yes, ma'am, this is the right extent. Could you speak up a little, please? I can't hear you. Now, just a minute. All right, go ahead, please. That's 2238? Yes, ma'am, I had it. Yes, ma'am, right away. Well, it looks like you had it figured. How come? Somebody did catch on. Woman over near Los Feliz Boulevard. Yeah? Fellow's trying to give her a phony check. Trying? Yeah, he's still there. Frank and I drove out to a side street just south of Los Feliz Boulevard. It took us 20 minutes to get to the house. When we pulled up in front of the place, a lady was standing on the porch. She spotted our car and walked down the steps. You the policeman? Yes, ma'am. My name's Friday. This is Frank Smith. Hello, how are how you? How you doing, ma'am? You certainly didn't hurry. Well, the traffic's kind of heavy this time of day. Well, why didn't you use your siren? We didn't want to scare him off. Well, it's too late for that. He left about 10, 15 minutes ago. Oh, I'm Daisy Wilkers. Suppose you need that name for your records. Yes, Ms. Wilkers. Not Mrs. Oh. You see which way he went? He took a bus on the corner. Probably in Hollywood by now. Well, why did he leave in such a rush, you know? He got suspicious. Might have heard my phone call. I had to talk so loud to make you understand me. I tried to keep him here as long as I could. I did my best. You can't ask more than that. No, ma'am. Well, you might as well come inside. Suppose you want a full report. That's the regular procedure, isn't it? Are you familiar with police procedure, are you? Watched on television. Go to the movies. They got it all down pat. Yes, ma'am. Well, he came up to my door. Oh, must have been an hour ago by now. At least an hour. Yes, ma'am. Asked if I had a room for rent. I told him that's what the sign said. He just laughed. Like he thought I'd been making a joke. Didn't know I was serious. You show him the room? Well, I tried to. He hardly even glanced at it. Then he said this was exactly what he'd been looking for. That's when I first began wondering about him. What else did he say? That he used to live in a house like this when he was a little boy back east. And that it reminded him of home. I figured he was softening me up to get me to lower the rent. Well, two can play at that game. Yes, ma'am. What did you do? Well, I asked at $10. Room's not worth a cent over 45 I asked 55 Mm-hmm. That way I'd be able to come down when he started playing on my sympathies. Wouldn't be out anything either. Yeah. Didn't bat an eye. When I told him it was 55, said he'd take it, just like that. I knew right away something was wrong. What happened then? Well, we came downstairs into the living room here. Go ahead, please. Well, I said I wanted the first month's rent in advance. A lot of them try to pay you by the week. Before you can turn around, they're behind. Takes forever to get rid of them once they're moved in. I always insist on a full month. Yes, ma'am. Well, didn't bat an eye at that either. Brought out a checkbook. Now, did he ask if he could make it for a little extra? How'd you know? Well, he's been around before. 25 extra. That's what he wanted. If he'd been around so long, why haven't you picked him up? Well, we're trying, ma'am. 
A few minutes earlier this afternoon, he'd solved the whole case. Well, we're just as anxious to solve it as you are, Miss Walters. Did he say why he needed the extra cash, ma'am? Something about cab fare to get his things out here. That's a lot of cab fare. That's my own word. Right to his face. Exactly what I said. He said he'd have to clear up his hotel bill, too. Claimed they wouldn't take a check if he was moving. And that's when you called out? Of course not. Didn't call you until I was sure the check was no good. Not that I would have cashed it. But there's no point in running to the police until you got the facts to back you up. Mm-hmm. What made you so sure it was phony? Well, the way he signed it. What do you mean? Parker Allington. You knew he wasn't Allington. Well, how could he be? Allington's dead. You didn't know he was dead? Yes, ma'am, we knew it. Well, then? Miss Welker, are you connected with show business? I follow it, that's all. Oh, I don't spend all my time reading movie magazines or anything like that. But I keep up with what's going on in the field. Do you know Allington was on television last night? What's that? The Late Show. Picture must have been at least 20 years old. He played the villain. Did a good job considering it was 20 years ago. Gives you a funny feeling, though, watching somebody who isn't here anymore. Yes, ma'am. Now, as soon as you saw the name Allington on the check, you realized the guy was a phony and called us. Is that right? Well, approximately. Approximately. Well, I told him I didn't know if I had the cash in the house. Said I'd have to go upstairs and make sure. I got an extension phone up there. I see. Then I telephoned you. Uh-huh. One more thing, Miss Walters. Well? We've got a description, but it's rather vague. Description? Yes, that this guy has been passing himself off as Allington. Oh. All we know is he's medium-sized, gray hair, and fairly well-dressed. Well, that's about right. Well, it's not very specific. Can you add anything? You mean you want to know who he is? That's right. Wilbur French. Who's that? Used to play bit parts in pictures. Yeah. I recognized him the minute he came through the door. Miss Walters insisted her identification of the check forger was correct. We drove back to the office, checked the name Wilbur French through R&I. We had nothing on him. I telephoned Miss Breckhardt at the SAG. She reported that French was a member in bad standing, two years delinquent in his dues. She had no address listed for him, but she was able to tell us that the last company he had worked for was a small TV outfit on Santa Monica Boulevard. She also told us that his file showed that he was last represented by a Paul Pilcher, an agent with officers on Sunset. January 14th, 9.35 a.m. I dropped Frank off at the Santa Monica TV company, and I drove on out to interview Pilcher. Yes, sir? What can I do for you? I'd like to see Mr. Pilcher. Are you a client? Police officer. My name's Friday. Oh. Mr. Pilcher in? Not yet. You expecting him? Well, I don't know when exactly. Sometimes he plays tennis on Saturday mornings before he comes to the office. I see. But he'll be in. He's closing a deal with TRC. Oh. That's the studio. A new company just getting started. Oh, I see. Would you like to look at the trades while you're waiting? Yesterday's. They don't come out on Saturday. Well, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Pilcher in some kind of trouble? Not as far as I know, no. That's a relief. Mr. Pilcher's office. I'm sorry he hasn't come in yet. Any minute. Would you like me to have him call you? I see. Well, if you'll try again in about 15 minutes, you ought to be here. Bye. Morning, Mr. Pilcher. Good morning. This gentleman's waiting to see you. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Brogan's office called. They'll call back. Mr. Brogan's getting shaved. Yeah, all right. I'm a police officer. My name's Friday. Police? That's right. What can I do for you? I'd like to talk to you for a minute. All right, come on inside. Sit down. Thank you. Want a cigarette? Yeah, thank you. Here's your lighter. We might have a match here. Well? You handle an actor named Wilbur French, Mr. Pilcher. French? That's right. No, no, I don't handle him. He used to be his agent, didn't you? Oh, a couple of years ago, not anymore. Oh. What's he done? Could you tell me where I could find him? I wouldn't have any idea. I don't think he's had much work lately. At least I haven't heard about him working. What was his last address? Oh, you come to the wrong man. Well, the last address that you have for him, by the way. I don't keep addresses of actors after they leave me. Well, why did he leave you? Usual reason, no work. It's pretty bad as an actor. Excuse me, huh? Yes? I'll put him on. Hello, George. How are you? Glad to hear it. And Mabel? Oh, that's a shame. Seems to be a lot of it going around this time of year. Well, what about Harvey? You make up your mind? Uh-huh. I sure don't agree with you there, George. He didn't look too old in the test. So he's been in the business a few years. You can't hold that against him. What do you mean a new face? You'll bring out somebody from New York who's been on television a hundred times. There won't be anything new about his face. Look, I'm not trying to tell you your business. I'm just trying to set a good actor in the right part. I'll be through soon, Mr. Friday. Yeah. That's more like it, George. Now, how many weeks work? No, no, George, I've read the script. Davis can't shoot that many scenes in two weeks. Twelve hundred a week, four-week guarantee. 
Fletcher paid him twelve hundred last fall. Go ahead and check. Look, George, if I was a Beverly Hills agent, you know what Harvey cost you? Well, I'm not going to argue with about it. You call Fletcher. He'll tell you what he paid Harvey. I'll be here till noon if you want to make a deal. Bye. Sorry to be so long. Sure. Any suggestions on how I might get in touch with French? Screen Actors Guild. Well, they sent me here. Oh. Well, what's he done? We'd rather talk to him. Well, the last time I saw him, he touched me for ten bucks. Where was that? I bumped into him on the street. Is it serious? It's just a routine investigation. Thanks very much, Mr. Coulter. All right. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Yes, sir? I suppose I could turn him up. Be a dirty trick, though. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's my fault that he's in trouble. I didn't get him enough work. Now I hand him over to you. Makes me a heel, doesn't it? Well, you might be doing him a favor. Well, he won't think so. You said you didn't know where he lived. Well, I don't. Well, how will you find out? Spread the word around that I got a job for him. He'll hear about it. I see. He'll turn up. All right, sir. Leave your number. When I hear from French, I'll get in touch with you. Thank you. I still feel like a heel. Well, you shouldn't. You called the turn on him. Mm -hmm. He's a bad actor. I left Pilcher's office and picked up Frank. The TV company had given him a still photo from the last production in which French had appeared. Two of the check victims readily identified the man in the picture. The third victim was also certain it was the same person who had posed as Allington. January 16th, 3.32 p.m. Paul Pilcher telephoned the office. He told us French was living at a hotel in Hollywood on Selma Avenue. When we got there, the desk clerk said French was in his room, 17B. Uh, that... Yeah. Who is it? I'd like to talk to you, French. Just a minute. Yeah? We're police officers. I'd like to ask you some questions. Downtown. What is this, a gag? No, it's no gag. Well, anybody can get hold of a badge. Who sent you? Mike? Sammy? Come on, let's go, French. Knock it off. I've been in too many pictures. I can tell actors from cops. You ever hear of Parker Allington? Yeah, I've heard of him. Worked with him in pictures. Used to be friends. I'd give you the right to sign his name. Hmm? On bad checks. Now, look, boys. I know why they sent you. I told Mike I got a call this morning about a job. It'd be just like him to pick a time like this. <laughs> Some practical joker, isn't it? No, it won't work, French. What? Come on. You know who we are and why we're here. Let's go. It's one of Mike's gags. Yeah, well, three landladies say different. Oh. You want to get your coat? It was only a few bucks. It was enough. How'd you tumble? One of the landladies knew Allington was dead. I never figured he was that famous. She knew you, too. Me? That's right. Couldn't have known I was living here. Who told you? Come on, let's go. Pilcher. That's why I wanted to get in touch with me. I should have figured it wasn't about a job. Pilcher, wasn't it? Come on. Some agent. Couldn't land a job if your life depended on it. Five years. Over five years I was signed with him. Never had a decent booking. Nothing that lasted. A couple of days here and there. Nothing that lasted. Oh, don't you worry about it. Huh? This one will. Wilbur Carl Flicker, also known as Wilbur French, was found guilty on three felony warrants charging forgery. He was sentenced to the state prison as prescribed by Section 470 of the California Penal Code for a period of one to 14 years. Dragnet is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.